Former world champion Alexander Alekheim once said that uh, during a chess competition, a chess master has to be a combination of a beast of prey and a monk. When I look at the games of this Indian Grandmaster, I get that feeling that he's a combination of both and he presents it in his games really well. I'm talking about India's 37th Grandmaster Arvind Chidambaram. It is his birthday today, so fabulous birthday to Arvind and we wish him a great year ahead. Here I have his game against Sandeep and Chanda which he considers as one of his best games. Before we go into the games, I would like to tell you a little bit about Arvind. I saw Arvind for the first time in a raiding tournament in Tutikorin and uh, he was very young at that time and I was his roommate. That was when I saw him. It was a speak event. Initially, his grandfather taught him chess when he was 8 and uh, winning the under 11 nationals as well as the Chennai Open in 2013 are two victories very close to his heart and coincidentally both the tournaments happen at the same venue. He's also very happy to be a part of the winning team in the under 16 Olympiad in Hungary and he's won uh, two national championships back to back. I was there in both the events even in Sikkim and he was also part of the gold winning team in uh, the online Olympiad that took place last year. And Rook is his favorite chess piece and King's Indian Defense is his favorite chess opening. And uh, he doesn't read uh, many books but uh, sometimes he does read Tirukkural in Tamil and Ponnain Selvan and some poetry books. He loves movies and uh, one of the stars he, he likes is Vetri Maran and he also loves Shiva Kartikeyan. And uh, if I asked him if there is any quote he lives by. And he says that uh, not not in not anything in particular, but managing time is the key to managing life, as it applies to both chess and life. And uh, Magnus Carlsen and Abdul Kalam are two inspirations for him. So that was a brief introduction uh, of Arvind Chitabhram. And now let's go and uh, check his game against Sandeep Chanda. He was white and he played e4, c5, knight, c3. Now after d6, this move d4 has caught attention of many grandmasters in the recent years. After cd4, queen d4, the idea is to play bishop b5 after a knight c6 sometimes and sometimes white just plays queen d2 or queen to e3. So in this game, white is playing queen d2. Now you can feel the, uh, the bishop on c1 is not really happy, but white intends to develop this bishop via b3 and bishop b2. So. That way, keeping the queen on d2 is not a problem. So after knight f6, he played b3 and got his bishop to b2 and then triple rook. He castled on the queen side and after b5, he played f3. Now in this position, uh, after f3, h5 was played in the game between Magnus Carlsen and Wojtasek in 2018. So this shows that uh, Arvind had probably seen this game as well because after f3, his opponent deviated. Uh, his opponent is Sandeep and Chanda. Bishop e7 in this position and Arvind played king b1, castles. I'm going to ask you a question soon. After g4, b4, he put his knight to a4 and after knight d7, pretty obvious to play h4 because white's attack is going to be on the king side and black is going to play on the queen side. And after knight c5, he doesn't react to this move and simply plays g5. And after knight takes a4, b takes a4, you can see that white's pawn structure on the queen side is shattered. But white is very confident that his attack on the king side will give him uh, many chances. So after b takes a4, e5, I think this is a good moment for all of you to take a, uh, like make your choice. What will you do as white? Because it's very important to facilitate an attack on the king side by positioning your pieces properly. And uh, you must also make sure that uh, the timing is uh, in your hand because if you play some waste moves, black is already ready to threaten mating ideas with uh, queen a5, queen a4 and it's very important how you put your pieces now. In this position, the correct move was chosen by Arvind, he played knight e2 and uh, congratulations if you found this move. I think it's very crucial to put, put the knight on e2 and g3 and then to f5 and that's what he did. He played knight a5 and then knight g3 followed, queen c7 and now knight f5 is also interesting. But before going there, he first played f4 and after bishop d7, he put his knight to f5. And after bishop takes f5, e takes f5, rook fc8. I think this is another critical moment. What will you do as white? 
Okay, in this position, if you chose f takes e5, I would say there's a better move than this. After f takes e5, d takes e5, you will eventually have to play the move that was played by Arvind. So why not do it directly? So f6 is a very strong move. It, uh, the, the intention is pretty clear, white wants to open the king's position and after f6 his opponent played g takes f6. In this case, if black played bishop to f8, I think he, he was probably going to continue with g6. It's a typical uh, Sicilian attacking idea. If white plays, if black plays h takes g6, then there is h5 and soon this queen will also follow the party on the edge line. So after f6, gf6, gf6 followed and then after bishop takes f6, he gave a check with his rook. He played king to h8 and um, here Arvind played bishop to d3. Now this bishop is keeping an eye on the h7 pawn, it's very clear. And after knight c4, he played queen e2 and after knight takes b2, again a good moment for you to think about the move. Will you play king takes b2, uh, will you play f takes e5 or something else? All right, in this position, if you chose bishop takes h7, that's the correct move. Congratulations. If you take king takes b2, it's a mistake here because black has pawn to e4 check. And when, when you move the king to, let's say, b1, there is queen c3. And it is not black, but it's the white king who's going to get checkmated soon. So in this position, after knight into b2, it is very important to play bishop takes h7. And this was all seen by Arvind beforehand and uh, king h7 is obviously not possible because of mate in one so his opponent played knight takes d1 and then queen h5 now there's a deadly discovered check so black had to do something about it so black played knight c3 check first and after king a1 played bishop g7 this provides a temporary cover for the king but it's not enough to save the game bishop d3 check followed by queen h7 and the bishop is lost and uh, you can see that this queen and rook on the 7th line are very menacing and uh, he won the game in a few moves. After d5 he took f 5 and then after king e8 he played e6 and then picked up the queen as well and then he went on to win the game. That was Arvind Chidambaram's amazing game uh, which I loved covering. I hope you liked the video and uh, thank you Arvind for sending us your answers to the questions as well as letting us know about your best game we wish you the best in all your endeavors and dear viewers i hope you like the video i'll be back with another video soon until then take care and bye bye